Our next finalist is a social scientist, which is so lovely because, you know, she could have become an anti-social scientist. <laughs> um, she's representing the East Midlands. It's Nikki Pierce. Listen, can you hear that as I take you back to the 1990s? Can you hear that noise? What? Girls are getting better GCSE results than boys? That can't be right. What's happening to our education system? It must be skewed in favour of the girls if boys aren't succeeding. That's the sound of the moral panic created by the media back in the 90s. And you thought I was going to talk about the Blur versus Oasis debate, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, as we know, the government liked to respond to a call from the media, and so they got together some so-called government experts, and they put together some quickly researched, hastily put together strategies based on outdated notions of masculinity, trying to appeal to what boys would like to learn. And they said, I know, boys love competition, they love sport, and they love being anarchists, don't they? So let's make learning about football and point scoring, and let's buy them some special pens so they can write on windows and desks instead of on paper. And you might think I'm joking, but unfortunately I'm not. Nobody asked at all why girls were doing better than boys, only to say that boys didn't like coursework, and girls do. Boys prefer the competition of stress of exams, apparently. Well, I'm a girl, and I hated coursework. But what do I know? I'm only a girl. So, we need to stop and think for a minute. It's only only middle-class girls that are doing better than boys. In this noise, there are silent and forgotten casualties. These are working-class girls. Working-class girls' attainment has dropped from 2019 to 2023 by nearly 20%. And Roma traveller gypsy girls have always had the lowest attainment. And we as educators, we don't like these girls because they're noisy and they're troublesome and they don't do what they're told. And that's why I argue middle-class girls do better. Not because boys need competition or male role models. It's because middle-class girls do what they're told. They do what society expects. Girls are well-behaved and quiet, and boys, of course, will be boys. So, how do we address this? We need to look at our curriculum. We serve, we serve a curriculum that is not fit for a post-industrial world. We um, serve a curriculum that is only palatable to a few. We state that we should teach cultural capital so these disadvantaged girls can ne negotiate a middle-class world. But at the same time, we negate their way of life. It's not because these girls are stupid or lack, lack aspiration. It's because they can't see themselves in the system. Okay? They actually and the system is failing them. And we as teachers sigh collectively as we teach the next generation and go, you're just like your mother, so there's no hope for you either. Can you hear the moral panic from the government and the media now? No, I didn't think so. Amazing. Let's turn to the judges. Maggie, have you got any questions for Nikki? Yes. So, um, uh, you work in education. Yeah. And um, this was a, a very uh, interesting way of getting across, actually, uh, what sounds like a terrible time. I mean, all those things you mentioned yeah. were awful. Yeah. Um, so, um, I, but, so, do you think this is a good way of highlighting it? I think so, yeah. Because I, I think the government kind of shoehorned these strategies into the classroom without actually thinking... What's the repercussions? It's not actually raised boys' achievement by much, and it's not helped lower, uh, not lower, but uh, disadvantaged girls. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm on the learning part now. I'm <laughs> learning a lot. Uh, Sam, what have, you, what, have you got any suggestions, any questions? Yeah, I, th I think sometimes we think of class, and it can almost feel very, really uh, hard to grasp. How did you turn class into something that you can measure and kind of use scientific methods. Um, it's on. really difficult mm. and so you kind of have to use the free school meals um, measure which is uh, what the government used to say who's a dis in a disadvantaged uh, cohort. So that's what I looked at. I looked at that, that kind of free school meals and who was entitled to them. Thank you very 
Oh, doing important work, right. <laughs> Give it up for Nikki Pierce one last time!